All right, let us uh, have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for another day. And Lord, we thank you again for your mercy and your grace to us. Lord, today. Lord, today. Father, I pray again that you'll meet the need of our heart. Father, I pray for our, ourselves physically. Lord, I, I pray again for my voice. Lord, I pray you'll help my voice. Again, Father, I thank you for allowing me to be here. And Lord, I pray you continue to help me now. Father, we pray this afternoon. Father, Father, this afternoon, as we think one more time about the Lord's death for us. Lord, I, Lord, I pray that it'll have meaning to us. Not just something that we do. To take up a Sunday afternoon. But Lord has real meaning and purpose in our life. Father, I pray that you would help us, Lord, with today. Again, I thank you for all that have stayed. I thank you, Lord, for all who helped fix the meal. I thank you, Lord, for all those who helped clean up the meal. Lord, we could not do Lord, we could not do what we do here if people did not help out. And Lord, I'm reminded again that as a Christian, one of the things we are is a servant. And Father, I, I know that if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you need to have a servant's heart. And so Lord, I, I thank you for all of our servants here at this church, people who are willing to do things. Oh, but Lord, that's not why we're, we're here. Lord, we're here again to remember what you did for us. And Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians 11 again. My favorite text, the one that I like. Next guy come may not, but this is the one I like. Verse 23, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Of course, Paul was not there uh, at the Last Supper. I've said before, Paul was 29 years old when he got saved. He got saved shortly after, the, after Pentecost. That surely... As the disciples on the road to Emmaus said to Jesus, you know, these things, art thou a stranger? And hast thou not known? And as Paul said to Agrippa, these things were not done in a corner. I'm fairly confident in saying that Paul was probably there. He may have been one, he may not have been the one, but he may have been one of the ones that ascended to the death of Christ. So where did he get it? Well, as I said, a couple weeks ago, there are two silent periods in Paul's life. One is when he is in the Arabian desert. We really don't know what, on, what, what went on there other than that God met with him. I believe probably the Lord Jesus met with him and, and taught him and showed him things. For he said there in that verse, For I have received of the Lord. From the Lord he got this. Didn't get it from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. He got it from the Lord. The other quiet period in Paul's life is the two years that he was in prison in Caesarea Philippi. We only know three chapters of what happened there, and that was only like an hour's worth when he met before Felix, Festus, and Agrippa. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. This do remembers me. Again, we do not believe that the body, the bread becomes the body, literally the body of Christ, as some do. They want to take John chapter 6, and Jesus said, Except ye eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Now, and to say that, but that's not, that has nothing to do with the Lord's table at all. That was given years before the Lord's table was ever instituted. And really, Jesus said, made it very clear in John chapter 6, that it is the Spirit that giveth life, not eating bread and drinking juice. It is the Spirit. So when we eat the bread today, we are reminded that Jesus' body was broken for us and that with his stripes we are healed. With his bones pulled out of joint, Yet he himself was not a bone broken. So we remembered, we remember the bread. 
people have asked me, how come we use this, this unleavened bread? Why do we use unleavened bread? Well, leaven is a picture of sin. And I've been in churches where they cut bread up into cubes and they gave it out. But I think that this bread, I said before that bread they use at, at Passover is very, very thin so that it cooks very quickly and it has stripes in it and it has holes punched in it, which again is a picture of with his stripes we are healed and he was nailed to that cross for us. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So today, one more time, we remember, are reminded. I go by graveyards all the time. Sometimes I stop at graveyards and I walk into them and I have no idea who's buried there. Some of the gravestones are so old you can't even read them anymore. Just kind of weathered away with time. Others have fallen over. Uh, you don't even know where they go. I mentioned this morning about my great-grandfather. Gone but not forgotten. But that isn't true. I would suspect the only two people who know that my grandfather is buried there are me and my boy Tim. Nobody remembers James Jenkins. He's long gone. My grandfather was 43 when he died in 1944. Wasn't very old. On the tombstone says, here lies an honest man. Whether he was or not, I do not know. People put those grave markers up so that we can remember people. But after about two weeks, people don't really remember you too much anymore, except maybe in passing. And we are so prone to forget that Jesus said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. You will show my death, remember my death, until I come. Every month we look for Jesus to come. Every month he doesn't come. So one more time today we're going to observe the Lord's table. And we are going to be reminded of that great sacrifice that Jesus gave for us at Calvary. Father, we thank you again now for this table. Bless it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.